I was just thinking a while ago of all that snow. When I was a kid about your, your ages, you've always heard the story. Somebody's told you they had to walk five miles to school both ways up the hill. You've always heard those stories. Well, that's kind of my story, too. But <laughs> I used to live on the other side of the fortification creek, and I went to school on the Yampa School, the old Yampa School. And I think it was in the winter of, and I couldn't have been much older than you all are about the same. I, uh, there was a, a lot of snow and it really got hard on top so I could walk on top of the snow to go to school. Well I fell through it one day and that snow was about four or five foot deep and I fell through and it took me a long time to get back up on top so I could go into school. But that's the way we lived back then. <laughs> there was a lot of snow. Of course when I, when I was you guys' age I delivered papers with a bicycle with a dog in my basket when I went all over town. <laughs> he liked to go with me. And I worked in the little bowling alley during the war as a pin setter. And I was so little, it was what they call the duck pins. Uh, they're small pins. And that, that bowling alley, I'm trying to, it was right across the street from where the Golden Cavy is, and there was a bowling alley there. And this was during the war, and they let me set pins down there, and and I'd have to. They would throw us. It was a smaller ball than what they use now, and they would throw it down, knock the pins over. Then I'd have to pick them up by hand, and put them in this pin setter above me, and then when it when it was full, or when I had to let it back down. And I'm serious, I wasn't much bigger than you guys. I uh, had to grab that thing up there and pull it down, and I had to put all my weight on it to get it down, and then set the pins. And that was a good job. I made good money because um, all the guys that could afford to uh, uh, bowl there had money. And whenever they were finished bowling, is what bothered me most, was they used to throw a, maybe a 50 cent piece or a silver dollar down the alley to me and I was and I had a where I stood there was kind of a rubber grating and if I didn't catch those it'd get down in the grating then I'd have to dig them out so that was fun I, I enjoyed that they they really didn't have playgrounds well they had play they had areas we could play but uh, we're allowed to go off and play on a fortification uh, up and down the creek or, or just go off in the woods. We had a lot more woods around here. And, you know, we, you know, we never worried about much. And our folks didn't worry too much as long as we showed up sometime. When I was about, I'll have to tell this story. <laughs> when I was about 12 years old, my mother had to have a serious operation in Denver. And there was only two of us, my brother and I, and I was two years older than him. And back in those days, people, people could leave their kids. They, were, they knew how to take care of themselves. They were trained. And, I, and I'm sure that all you kids have a lot of training. But uh, they didn't worry too much about us. And, and my mother was out there for two weeks. And my dad went with her, left us at home by ourselves. And we made out fine. And I was the cook. And my brother, in later years, one thing I could do, I could cook eggs. And in later years, he told, he told everybody, he said, I will never eat another egg. He said, I never ate eggs in so many different ways in my life. And that's always been a good story. But anyway, we survived. And we knew how to take care of ourselves. And people were good about checking on each other here. They really wanted to make sure everybody was okay. We didn't have to lock our doors. <laughs> and when I was growing up at um, where the other museum is, out of one museum, okay, I lived there, my brother and I, and my folks, right there. And well, we lived up the road a little ways. And my dad worked for what they called the Jones Dairy thing, and they milked cows, and, and then. When we moved to that museum, I think I told y'all 
we had a mink farm there and raised mink. And that was a long ways out of town in those days. And I was still pretty little, younger than y'all, and we moved a little closer to Craig. And I, I think back on the lot, there was nothing out there. And I could go anywhere I wanted to play. Just uh, there was no homes around there, hardly. And until you got right down almost to the uh, almost to the creek is where the homes started. And we just out of just ways. So, and I always thought that was a long ways to get to Craig. <laughs> well, my wife, uh, she grew up on the other side of Cedar Mountain out here. And back when she was a young girl, just, just like you, uh, they still used a horse and team to come to town. Over Cedar Mountain, you know, in town. And they'd come once a month to shop, and, and she said that her folks would put them in the movie so they'd be out of the way, leaving there all day so they could go do their shop. <laughs> and you can check this out. I was the first guy to go to state in wrestling in the Yampa Valley, where it was. I went out there, I think it was 127 pounds. I'm a little confused. I was a lot smaller than I am now. <laughs> but uh, they had just started wrestling here, and it had only been going on for about, oh, three years, two or three years. And the year before I went, there was a guy here named Chuck Pelosian. I don't know whether you ever knew him. He's no Chuck. Well, he qualified to go to state, and the school didn't have enough money to send him, or he'd have went. He'd have been first one. And and I and I say the Yampa Valley. That that included like Hayden, Steamboat, uh, Minker, and and this vicinity here, and all the schools had just started wrestling, so it was brand new. And but I did. I went to state. And I got out there, scared me half to death, and I lost my first match. But that's okay. I went. And I'm in the books that they have that. you got a big old thick book out there. But back in those days, to get to state, we had to go through uh, uh, Montrose. Montrose tournament down there. It's a little different now. And that was a tough one to get through. It really was. I mean, we used to ice skate down there where the big pool is now. There was an ice skating rink there, and um, I even got pretty good at ice skating when I was a kid. That was fun, and and they didn't have a, I wouldn't say they had it was well maintained or anything. We had to maintain it ourselves, and then down on the river at the park down there, and the, there's still a lot of water in the same area. Uh, we used to be able to go down there and do a lot of skating and have big skating parties and so forth. So we did that. And we skied. Yeah. You know, that hill that sits on the other side of fortification, there was no homes up on that hill back when we grew up. And we used to uh, build our ski runs off of there. And we didn't have our skis, the wooden skis with just a strap. That's all we had. We didn't have ski boots or anything like that. And we thought we were in hog heaven. We really thought we were. And we had a sleigh ride hill over there. And we built us a big jump. Later we learned that our jump was wrong because we had it at the bottom of the hill and we'd come out and land flat. You're supposed to build them up on the hillside and land going downhill still. And anyway, that's that was some of the things we did too.